Today, we journey back to the summer of 1947, to a remote desert near Roswell, New Mexico. Here, an event unfolded that would challenge our understanding of the extraordinary and ignite a controversy spanning decades. Welcome to Stranger Realms TV. Join us as we meticulously unravel the complex story of the Roswell incident, a tale of mystery, conspiracy, and the pursuit of truth. Our story begins in early July 1947. Amidst the arid landscape of the New Mexican desert, personnel from the Roswell Army Airfield come across an unexpected site, debris scattered over a large area. This is no ordinary wreckage. It consists of metallic fragments and unusual rubber strips. The materials are unfamiliar, piquing the curiosity of the finders and setting the stage for a historic announcement. On July 8, 1947, excitement and mystery culminate in a press release from the Roswell Army Airfield. The words are striking. They claim to have recovered a flying disc. This announcement comes at a time when the nation is already captivated by reports of unidentified flying objects, sparked by pilot Kenneth Arnold's sighting of crescent-shaped objects earlier that summer. The revelation sends shockwaves through the media and the public. However, this initial excitement is short-lived. The sky is the stage, the actors so-called flying saucers. And they're back on the scene with some new twists. Rumors about the saucer mystery fly almost as fast as the strange sights themselves. Almost as quickly as the story breaks, the Army retracts its statement. They now describe the recovered object as merely a weather balloon, part of a conventional military exercise. This sudden turnaround fuels skepticism and raises questions about the true nature of the debris. For over 30 years, the Roswell incident remains a forgotten footnote of history. That is until 1978, when ufologist Stanton Friedman interviews Jesse Marcel, a retired lieutenant colonel and key witness to the 1947 event. Marcel casts doubt on the official explanation, suggesting the debris was not from a weather balloon, but something more extraordinary. His revelations reignite interest in the Roswell incident, sowing the seeds of enduring conspiracy theories. Marcel's assertions set off a chain reaction in the world of ufology. His claims suggest a cover-up at the highest levels, possibly masking the recovery of extraterrestrial technology or beings. This leads to decades of speculation, investigations, and a myriad of theories, each more elaborate than the last. The resurgence of interest in Roswell leads to mounting public pressure for answers. In response, the United States Air Force conducts several investigations. Their 1994 report concludes that the debris was part of Project Mogul, a top-secret operation involving high-altitude balloons for nuclear test monitoring. Yet, for many, this explanation does little to quell the tide of skepticism. The Air Force's account faces scrutiny. Conspiracy theorists argue that the timing and nature of the project do not fully account for the characteristics of the debris and the initial military reaction. The debate intensifies with claims of alien spacecraft and even the recovery of extraterrestrial occupants. Roswell becomes a hotbed for UFO enthusiasts and a symbol of governmental secrecy. Despite official reports, the legend of Roswell refuses to fade. It transcends into a cultural phenomenon, inspiring books, movies, and TV shows. The city of Roswell itself becomes a pilgrimage site for those fascinated by the unknown, hosting ufology events and embracing its unique place in popular culture. As we gaze into the vastness of the cosmos, the story of Roswell invites us to ponder the possibilities that lie beyond our current understanding. In the realm of the strange and the unexplained, the Roswell incident endures as a beacon of mystery, challenging us to question, to wonder, and to explore the unknown. Our tale unfolds at the dawn of the Atomic Age, a time when the world teetered on the brink of the Cold War. The United States, deeply invested in monitoring Soviet activities, had launched Project Mogul, 
a classified endeavor involving high-altitude balloons carrying listening devices to detect Soviet atomic tests. It was against this backdrop of global tension and technological innovation that the Roswell incident occurred. On June 4, 1947, researchers launched Flight 4 of Project Mogul from Alamogordo Army Air Field. This balloon train, carrying sensitive equipment, was tracked heading northeast towards Corona, eventually losing contact near Mac Brazel's ranch, the eventual site of the Roswell discovery. In the same month, the nation was captivated by Kenneth Arnold's report of high-speed flying objects, coining what would become known as flying saucers. Here we've seen something, I've seen something, hundreds of pilots have seen something in the skies. We have dutifully reported these things. And we have to have 15 million witnesses before anybody's going to look into the problem seriously. Why, this is utterly fantastic. This is more fantastic than, than flying saucers or, or people from Venus or anything, as far as I'm concerned. This sparked a wave of over 800 sightings nationwide, with descriptions ranging from glass domes and jet pipes to vapor trails and even propellers. The phenomenon reached a fever pitch when United Airlines Flight 105 reported multiple flying disks on July 4, 1947. In mid-June, W.W. Mac Brazel discovers debris scattered across his ranch. Unbeknownst to him, the materials, tinfoil, rubber, tape, and thin wooden beams are remnants of the Project Mogul balloon. With no phone or radio, Brazel is oblivious to the flying disc frenzy sweeping the nation. It's only after a visit to a local bar in Corona that he learns of the craze and realizes the potential significance of his find. Brazel reports his discovery to the sheriff in Roswell, who contacts the Roswell Army Airfield. Major Jesse Marcel and Captain Sheridan Cavitt are dispatched to investigate. They collect more material from the debris field, unaware that they are about to become central figures in one of the most debated incidents in UFO history. On July 8th, Marcel presents the debris to Colonel William Blanchard, commander of the 509th. Blanchard, sensing the gravity of the situation, reports the findings to General Roger Ramey at Fort Worth Army Airfield. Orders are quickly issued to transport the material to Fort Worth. That same day, a press release from the Roswell Army Airfield shocks the world, announcing the recovery of a flying disc. The news spreads like wildfire. Radio station KSWS breaks the story. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. And their lines are overwhelmed with calls from around the world. Lydia Sleppy, a teletype operator at Caught Station in Albuquerque, begins transmitting a story about the wreckage but is abruptly ordered to stop. The military's control over information is tightening. Amid this whirlwind, the military stages a press conference at Fort Worth. General Ramey, alongside Colonel Thomas DuBose and Weather Officer Irving Newton, present a very different explanation. The debris is from a weather balloon. The once sensational story of a flying disc is debunked in the eyes of the public. Following the press conference, the U.S. Army further clarifies the debris as part of a weather balloon. This prosaic explanation, however, leaves many unsatisfied. The Roswell incident, born in the shadows of the atomic age and the Cold War, continues to intrigue and mystify, a symbol of the era's tension and the enduring human fascination with the unknown. After three decades of relative obscurity, the Roswell incident was thrust back into the limelight. The late 1970s and 1980s saw a resurgence of interest, fueled by UFO conspiracy theories and a renewed fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial life. This period marked a significant shift in the story, where tales of crashed spaceships and alien bodies began to intertwine with the original Roswell story. 
Folklore scholars trace the evolution of the Roswell myth to the final days of World War II, when Japan unleashed Fugo balloon bombs on the United States. This historical context adds a layer of intrigue to the evolving Roswell mythos, intertwining wartime fears with burgeoning UFO lore. In the years following Roswell, a series of hoaxes added fuel to the fiery speculation. One notable incident occurred in Twin Falls, Idaho, where a flying disc was reportedly recovered. This turned out to be a fabrication by local teenagers, yet it captivated national attention and further stirred public imagination. Another remarkable episode was the Aztec, New Mexico, hoax of 1949. Con artists convinced journalist Frank Scully and the magazine Variety to publish tales of a crashed saucer with dead alien bodies. Elements of this story, such as small humanoid figures and unusual metal, would later become recurring motifs in the Roswell story. By the 1960s and 1970s, amidst growing societal distrust of government, the UFO community revisited these earlier claims, adding new layers to the Roswell story. Books like Incident at Exeter and The Fortec Conspiracy introduced ideas of UFO cover-ups and alien bodies, further entrenching these concepts in popular culture. One pivotal moment came in 1974 when Robert Spencer Carr, on a radio interview, claimed that alien bodies were stored at Hangar 18 at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Despite official denials and clear connections to earlier science fiction, these claims captured the public's imagination and added another chapter to the Roswell saga. By 1978, Ufologist Stanton Friedman interviewed Jesse Marcel, the Army officer who had first handled the Roswell debris. Marcel's revelation that the weather balloon story was a cover-up reignited interest in the incident. He speculated that the debris was extraterrestrial, a claim that transformed Roswell from a forgotten military incident into a cornerstone of UFO lore. Marcel's story gained widespread attention, further popularized by a 1980 book, The Roswell Incident. Although Marcel consistently denied the presence of alien bodies, his son, Jesse Marcel Jr., would claim to have seen alien debris, including a beam with mysterious hieroglyphics, fueling further speculation. As the dust settled on the initial investigations, the Roswell Incident was far from closed. Entering into the latter half of the 20th century, a new wave of interest would rekindle old mysteries and give birth to new legends. The Roswell myth was significantly shaped by the The Roswell Incident book, written by Charles Berlitz and William Moore. The book proposed an extraterrestrial craft struck by lightning, leading to a government cover-up. Despite the speculative nature of these claims, the book's story captivated the public further blurring the lines between fact and fiction. By the early 1990s, the Roswell story had diverged into multiple competing stories. Books like UFO Crash at Roswell and Crash at Corona introduced new witnesses and elements, such as additional crash sites and more alien bodies. These evolving tales led to a schism within the UFO community with various groups championing different versions of the story. This era of conflicting accounts and sensational theories culminated in a 1992 UFO conference, where attempts to reconcile these divergent stories proved futile. The Roswell story had grown far beyond its initial scope, becoming a complex tapestry of myth, speculation, and pop culture, a phenomenon that continues to intrigue and captivate. In the early 1990s, the Roswell mystery took a significant turn. Prompted by an inquiry from Congressman Stephen Schiff, the General Accounting Office directed the Secretary of the Air Force to investigate. The result was two reports in 1994 and 1997, both concluding that the Roswell debris was likely from Project Mogul. While UFO proponents dismissed these findings as disinformation, Skeptical researchers used them to challenge the extraterrestrial explanation. 
In 1995, a sensational film emerged claiming to depict an alien autopsy from the Roswell incident. Released by Ray Santilli, the footage aired globally, igniting a media frenzy. However, the film was quickly debunked and, by 1998, even Fox Television, which had originally broadcast the footage, aired a special debunking it. Santilli later admitted the film was a fabrication, inspired by what he claimed was genuine lost footage. Philip J. Corso's 1997 autobiography, The Day After Roswell, introduced a new element to the story, claiming to have seen a non-human body transported through Fort Riley in 1947. However, skeptical analysis exposed numerous inconsistencies in Corso's account. Simultaneously, other theories emerged, like Nicholas Redfern's Body Snatchers in the Desert, suggesting the crash may have involved a high-altitude balloon test using deformed POWs, and a tale in Annie Jacobson's book implicating Joseph Stalin and Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele in a bizarre plot. As we approach the present day, the Roswell incident remains a kaleidoscope of competing stories and debunked theories. From sensational claims of alien autopsies to controversial historical reinterpretations, the incident has been dissected and debated in countless ways. Yet amidst this maelstrom of speculation, the truth about Roswell, whatever it may be, remains an elusive mystery, a symbol of the human fascination with the unknown and the unexplained. Today, Roswell, New Mexico, remains a distinctive emblem of the long-standing impact of the events from 1947. The city has embraced its place in UFO history, transforming into a hub for ufology enthusiasts. With museums, annual UFO festivals, and alien-themed businesses, Roswell has become a pilgrimage site for those fascinated by the unknown. The Roswell incident has deeply permeated popular culture, inspiring numerous films, television shows, and books. From Hangar 18 to The X-Files and Independence Day, Roswell has been a recurring theme in science fiction, often portrayed as a government cover-up of an alien encounter. Beyond its cultural and commercial influence, the Roswell incident has also found a place in the realm of spirituality and New Age beliefs. It is seen by some as a pivotal moment in human extraterrestrial interaction, influencing various UFO religions and spiritual movements. Despite the debunking of many claims and the official explanations regarding Project Mogul, the Roswell incident continues to captivate and divide opinions. Um, wherever they hold, have the files uh, about Area 51 and the UFOs, <laughs> yeah. and I go through everything to find out what happened. Right. Did you do that? <laughs> That's why you will not be president. <laughs> Presidents, skeptics, and UFO researchers have all weighed in, each offering their own take on this iconic event. Did you go through the secret files the UFO document. Now that you're out of office, you can do anything you want, right? True, yeah. Uh, but I'm not telling you. For many, Roswell remains a symbol of mystery, a story that continues to evolve and provoke wonder. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yeah. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's actually the real question I want to know. It like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it, I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. As we look to the skies, the Roswell incident remains a fascinating blend of myth, history, and cultural phenomenon. It's a story that continues to inspire imagination and debate, a symbol of our persistent quest for understanding the mysteries of the universe.